happening in this crazy world around us where everything changes uh, daily, seemingly. I see a lot of innovative uses of data. Certainly artificial intelligence is at the center stage, machine learning, supervised methods, unsupervised methods, reinforcement learning. Definitely a lot of the innovation is around artificial intelligence today. It starts from innovative use of new sources of information that we haven't even considered before. Um, like using um, even mobile data to understand whether this person is going to be creditworthy. Uh, innovative use of um, aggregated transactions to, um, to underwrite a loan for small and medium businesses. And then of course you can look at disruption and innovation together. Disruptive innovation to me is something that forces you to stop and think. It forces you to change your behavior. I use the example a lot that a laser pointer, while it's cool, is not really innovation. It's just a long stick. I can go over there and point. But cloud computing forces me to stop and think about privacy. I, I have no choice. So it's disruptive. Um, the frames that I try to make sure we balance are people, process, technology, and mindset. I think if you've got some degree of focus on all four of those dimensions, then you've, you've got a plan that's pretty sound. How do we as leaders look at our organizations differently in the face of all of this change, all of this constant challenge with disruptive innovation? We can't just lead harder. We have to lead differently. If we're going to do that right, we need to do two things. We need to teach something and learn something every day. If you're only teaching, you're becoming slowly irrelevant and if you're only learning, you're being selfish. So I think we need to do both of those. But I think that also the other part of it is this creating a culture within the company where everybody wants to learn and everybody wants to teach. Be curious. Mm -hmm. Be curious what, what's happening in academia, what's happening yeah. in, in industry, in the, in the best uh, companies. I think it's all very important for, for innovation. What, what, what's what do you find very interesting in, in the industry around you? We focus on risk and opportunities, total risk and total opportunities. So on the total risk side, it's our customers are making decisions about do they do business with a counterparty, do they extend credit terms, do they um, maybe, uh, they might be looking at something more complex like a corporate action, uh, uh, merger and acquisition. On the opportunity side, it's uh, new customers, understanding white space, understanding where they might go. What I find changing now is that these areas are not really, there's no dichotomy anymore, they're blended. Risk contains opportunity and opportunity contains risk. So I think we have to be less binary I think we have to be more specific about what we believe going in. And there's a, a, a great danger in all of this complexity to just spin, uh, leading with a method instead of leading with a problem. This pragmatic aspect of innovation has to be there. You're solving a problem, right? You, you want to tie it to something that um, maybe not tomorrow, maybe in the horizon three is, is, is going to be solving something real. So we challenge. We look at risk and opportunity as this blended space and we challenge in order to make ourselves better scientists and better practitioners. Leaders of data-based organizations don't get to just talk about the data anymore. We've got to be focused on the problem and the opportunity. Um, we are looking right now with um, explosion of IoT and understanding how our clients, such as insurance companies, for example, are using IoT mm -hmm. um, to, um, to understand the risk better and maybe even have a partnership with the uh, uh, people that they insure to make sure that they can help to prevent risk before it occurs. And, and as we talk with our clients, you know, we, we are looking a lot of a, a lot of opportunities with geospatial. Of course, that's that's why clients come to us. It's a it's a it's a very interesting world of opportunities that comes 
um, from IoT devices, and I think we are just scratching a surface Absolutely. of it. They are right now all kind of centrally connected. I think looking in the future, it's not going to be like that. We know it's not going to like they will be more autonomous. They will start Absolutely. communicating with each other. There are a lot of interesting uh, uh, implications and pot potentially disruptive. Uh, technologies there. I like to say that today the Internet of Things is really an Internet of Things connected to the Internet. And then there's there's others trying to take that data and draw inference from it. If I can look at when your lights go on and off and when your heat goes up and down, I can I can figure out whether your business is doing more business or less business, maybe. Or maybe I change my production mm -hmm. methods. Or, or maybe I have a different kind of thermostat. Or you know, so I think there's a lot of um, what we call first-order observation, looking at the data, fitting it to a hypothesis, and then trying to establish a correlation. That's very nice, but that second-order inference that comes from autonomy, from goal modification, mm -hmm. from IoT being used in a way where a device can discover another device and interrogate and decide whether or not to collaborate. We're nowhere near done with that yet. Wow, what an opportunity when we get there. But at the same time, you can see that the pressure in some industries kind of really push... Rush to market. Rush to market. Um, and good and bad, right? I mean, rush to market not always bad, but I'm thinking about retailers, right? And even the shopping experience that we all had last year and this year. Like, this year, doesn't matter where you go, you're going to be tracked somewhere within the store and it just becomes normal, right? You get, you get this things popping up on your mobile. So the retailers are pushing it because they don't have a choice. They have to, they have to do it to survive. I, I personally get f fascinated by seeing robots in the Walmart, right? Yeah. Doing the inventory. I mean, they, 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 there is a lot, a lot of innovation happens. And I think what's interesting is with, with IoT or with robots, we are creating data, right? Like we purposefully putting something physical in the world that creates data rather than just relying on, on, on digital world to take over. So what are we going to do to make that happen besides bump into the walls? And I think there's a huge opportunity there to, to, to step back from this, as you say, and look, okay, there's more robots. Well, what does that mean? Well, there's more autonomy. What does that mean? There's more goal modification. How does that impact AI? I don't know. We forgot to think about it. Go back and look at your, your base assumptions. People who can do that, I think, are going to be really powerful. The, the physicians of today are practitioners. They understand the human body as a whole, and then they form a clinical view of what they think is going on in the human body. I think we're going to do more of that with data. You couldn't possibly understand all the data. You couldn't possibly understand all the ways it's interacting. You're going to look at the manifestation of symptoms and signs and try and form differential diagnoses on the data-based environment and then test those and intervene, just like we do with medicine today, with data tomorrow. That's going to happen. Yeah, I think it will be an exciting world. Can't wait.